Welcome to NYNJPA Weather. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. And first and foremost, Happy Halloween. Well, at least for Sunday. Oh, and by the way, we are having a winter discussion for the for this upcoming winter for all premium members starting at 8 p.m. tonight and lasting until 9 p.m. If you're not a premium member, now's an excellent time to join. For the whole winter, only $35.94, and you get the best coverage for the weather for the northern mid-Atlantic. Let's look at the forecast. Well, fall-like conditions are finally here. Temperatures are returning back into the 50s, and you can say goodbye to the 70s for some time now. Also, high pressure is going to take control. Now, there are still some cloudy skies throughout the region. The reason why is because the upper level atmosphere is so much colder than the surface so therefore you get any type of moisture that is left over in the atmosphere is basically condensing into clouds and so you have overcast skies in some locations to scattered clouds in other locations no precipitation is expected with these with these clouds however it's going to feel a little bit cooler especially you know when you compare it to temperatures in the 70s for the past few days and now you're in the 50s especially if you're around 55, 53. This high pressure system will remain in control. A few weak cold fronts will move through with not much in the way of precipitation, but a reinforcing shot of polar air for Sunday, which will lead to temperatures remaining in the lower 50s. So if you're going out trick-or-treating, then definitely bring a jacket with you because you're going to need it because it's going to be chilly out, especially later in the evening when temperatures fall into the 40s. And yes, that's even along the New Jersey coast and parts of Long Island. So definitely be prepared uh, to bring an extra jacket. And uh, yeah, hey, get some extra candy too. You might need it for this winter. Now let's take a look at the satellite picture because there's an interesting development setting up in the Atlantic. What I have circled here is Tropical Storm Sherry. Now, Sherry is not going to pose a threat to the eastern United States, and the reason why is because of the cold front that just moved off the east coast. That cold front and the upper level trough associated with it will pick up Sherry and send it into the North Atlantic. So why is it important for us to keep an eye on Sherry? Well, unfortunately, every time a tropical system has moved into the North Atlantic this year, the North Atlantic Oscillation, which is very important uh, throughout the year, but especially in the fall and winter, has tanked. And the models always have missed it until it's too late. Well, it's happening again. Tropical Storm Sherry is starting to move northeast. It's going to move through Bermuda. Now, this is not a strong tropical system in any way, shape, or form, but still a system that is a warm core low that will add a lot of energy and um, basically enhance the thermal gradient that will impact the North Atlantic. And when you have that type of integration of very warm, very warm anomalies into the North Atlantic, you end up with a major storm. And when you have a major storm, you get a negative NAO. And when you get a negative NAO, you get much cooler conditions for the Northern Atlantic and the Northeast. Everything's connected. And this tropical storm, although will have a direct impact on the Northeast and Northern Atlantic, will have an indirect impact. Also, this tropical system will have an impact on the winter weather going forward. Why? Well, I discussed that in the premium discussions for today in the long-range pattern. Um, but I'll tell you this as a little tidbit. Uh, when you have more snow in northern Canada in the fall and around uh, northern Asia and Siberia, your cold air masses are usually much stronger in the winter. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're going to have a major storm up in northern Canada. This storm is also going to have an impact on a storm later on this week, next week that could actually bring some snow to parts of Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at this storm. This is the 500 millibar pattern of the European model guidance from Penn State eWall. An excellent website to visit to get all your latest model data. It's an excellent website. Now, notice a few interesting aspects here. The model guides are starting to pick up on a slower pattern. Why? What did I just talk about with the negative NAO? There we go. This is why everything's connected, even something that happens well out in the Atlantic. So our pattern's a little bit slower now. 
As a result, the potential for rainfall for Tuesday and Wednesday looks a little bit less likely, but I'm going to keep it in the forecast for now because we still don't have a strong handle on exactly how the North Atlantic Oscillation will set up as far as the orientation. What we do notice though, and this I find very interesting, is one, we have our ridge axis over Montana, which again, like I've been discussing for a while, when you have a ridge axis over Montana, watch out for a major storm along the east coast. And the trough now originally was, was tilted more to a positive to neutral orientation, is clearly starting to tilt more towards a negative orientation in the forecast. That's very important because a negative tilted trough means a slower storm and potentially a very intense storm for the northern Atlantic. Now, why am I mentioning snow? Let's take a look at 850 millibars. So here we are at 850 millibars. Now keep an eye on this black line here. This black line is basically the zero degree Celsius line at 850 millibars. Cuts right through New Jersey, uh, just to the northwest of New York City, and into Connecticut. For northeastern Pennsylvania, I, I want to make this very clear. If you are below 1,500 feet, this is all rain. I, I just don't have the support right now I don't think it's reasonable right now to go for anything frozen below those levels cold rain yes absolutely however above 1500 feet that's when things get interesting the cold air mass that is behind this low pressure system and on the northwestern side of the low pressure system that is developing is starting to show characteristics of being a very cold air mass at least on the model guidance it's trending towards that way and when you consider the the fact that we do have cold air building in northern Canada it is a potentially reasonable uh, observation or, or forecast should I say of a significant cold air mass diving south at the mid levels and potentially reaching you know 950 900 millibar uh, levels now what, is, what this is setting up to be, I think, is that as the slow pressure system intensifies off the New Jersey coast and it moves up towards uh, southern New England and the Hudson Valley, that on the back edge of this storm, you could mix over to some snow, possibly heavy snow for locations uh, above 1,500 feet. We'll have to keep an eye on it. There's a lot to, keep, to uh, work out here with this forecast, but the potential is there. I want to advertise it. How much snow? No idea. A lot, like I said, a lot has to be worked out, and there's a good chance that much of the snow will mix with rain, and you really won't get much of accumulation at all. But it's definitely an interesting observation that these coastal storms keep on popping up this time of year during a strong La Nina, when some meteorologists say the only thing that matters is a La Nina. Now, I tend to differ. So this is certainly something to keep an eye on as we move forward towards next week. And at the surface, you can see our low pressure system intensifying. Notice the high pressure centers over uh, eastern Canada. That's a very interesting position. And there is also some cold air damming starting to develop in some of the model guides as well. So uh, it looks like we're definitely looking for a very interesting and strong coastal storm for next week. Likely sometime between... Thursday afternoon into Friday, uh, at the very least along the coast, heavy rain, strong winds, and again in the interior, you could have a chance of mixing over to snow, and potentially heavy snow, um, for portions of the highest elevations in the uh, Poconos and over the Hudson Valley. Well, that's the forecast for this weekend. Halloween looks great, so get out in there and enjoy it. Just bring an extra jacket with you. And I'll keep an eye on this major storm and see if there's any changes in the model, guys. Should be pretty interesting. I'm meteorologist Stephen DiMartino. Thank you for trusting in NYNJPA weather for your weather source for the northern mid-Atlantic.